Howdy guys and gals, I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome to The Social Regressive. The rifle you see on the bench here is the CMMG Mark III DTR-2. It's a heavy AR-10 style rifle with a 24 inch stainless barrel that in this case happens to be chambered for 6.5 Creedmoor. I've been testing this with my own hand loads and coming up with groups that are down around a half MOA. And I've also been doing some tests with some friends. We I went out with four other friends and we shot at a moving targets actually on the range from 300 to 600 yards. We did some closer stuff with another rifle where we could shoot off hand, but considering how heavy this is, we waited till we were back at 300 yards and we just plain shot prone. The rifle did wonderfully. I really enjoyed shooting it. And one of the difficulties that I had when I was first outfitting the, the rifle to do some of the testing is what kind of bipod I would put on it. Because as I realized when it arrived, okay, yes, it is an M-Lock handguard, but it, it's also M-Lock on the bottom. And a direct attach M-Lock bipod is not so much a thing out there. You can get adapters, Picatinny adapters for some of the bipods that I already have, or maybe a quick detach stud sort of adapter, but you're adding extra height under your bipod, so you're getting your bipod more off axis, and you're kind of creating this weird balancing act where the rifle kind of feels like it's balancing on a ball. It, it doesn't feel particularly stable, and of course you're adding extra weight out on the end as you add some of those adapters. And the, the bipods themselves tend to have quite a big chunk of metal on the, on the top anyway, and I didn't really want all that weight out on the end of this particular rifle. I just happened to notice this. This is a very new product. This is the Leapers UTG Recon Flex Bipod. And once I saw how it worked, I knew I had to give it a try. I've had some UTG stuff in the past. Some has been a hit, some has been a miss, mostly a hit overall. And this has turned out to be just a really sweet bipod. You can see that it comes in two different chunks. You put these on either side of your handguard and it comes in two different flavors. So you have the uh, M-Lock right here, and you also have key mod, and then you have two different heights as well. You have a 5.7 to 8 inch, and you have an 8 to 11.8 uh, inch model, which you see right here. I recommend if you have an AR-15 and you want to be able to run your taller mags, or if you have an AR-10 like this, or one of the new tactical style rifles like the Savage Evolution, get the tall one. The short ones, they're probably not even going to really clear the magazine and the uh, the grip back here you might you might really encounter some interference where it's bonking into the ground you may not be able to shoot targets that are at a you know at a decent height and if you do shoot in the field you're also going to have difficulties with grass i recommend this tall one right here uh, this on Amazon costs about $55, so that's a real steal. There are some other bipods that have this form factor that attach to the sides of a handrail like this. I've seen these in the past, I think, on Barrett's and some other big rifles. And I know that there are some from Viltor and I think it's RND or something. And those look very nice as well. But this comes in at about a third the price of the others. Uh, it's about 170, 175 for the other guys. And on Amazon, this is going for, for 55, like I said. I'm gonna put a link down in the description. Follow that one because there is a seller out on Amazon that I originally ordered this for. And a month after I had ordered it, it turns out that it had just gotten lost in the mail or they had lost my invoice or something and they just canceled the order and that was a real pain in the neck. So I recommend that you just use the uh, the link that I have down below. That'll get you a, a more a, a better price if you decide to purchase one of these. And this is one of these uh, instances where I have really enjoyed shooting the bipod, but it is a little bit of a, a strange duck and you're going to want to listen to this to see if it is the kind of bipod that'll work for you. It has some very peculiar things about it, uh, some facets that make it difficult to use in certain situations and perfect to use in others. So you'll want to see how it matches up with the kind of shooting that you actually do. Before we start looking at the actual controls on this, I just wanted to uh, thank the patrons of the Destructive Arts out on Patreon. Thanks a bunch, you guys. You actually bought this. So we'll take a good look at it and we'll see if it'll be uh, money well spent for you guys. Aside from the rubber feet, the screws, and the pins, everything on this bipod seems to be aluminum. 
This comes in at 13.7 ounces overall for the tall model, and then the short one weighs 10.8 ounces. So it's overall very light, since we're missing a whole bunch of the parts that would usually come on a bipod. The mounting blocks on each side, these are aluminum right here, and they are not only kind of hollowed out here on the front side, but on the back side as well to save weight. The two screws, these Allen screws right here that attach everything to the rail, on the back side of these there are some small nuts that rotate up into place to actually lock this in. And that's what makes me say that this bipod is not a quick detach device. The nuts on the back side do not appear to be staked or anything or otherwise retained. So if you remove this in the field, you run a pretty uh, significant chance of actually losing the nuts back there. This is something that you, you attach, you leave it alone. Okay, so this block right here, you can see it has these slots cut into it. And that's how we can actually change the angle that these legs um, are sitting at when you're shooting. So if you pull down on this little guy right here, you can swivel up to the next kind of locking spot. And you can, so if you are shooting into some kind of uh, sloped surface in front of you, like say a rooftop or something like that, you can get a more flush connection with that surface. And this is going to be for stowing as you lock it all the way forward. You can lock it all the way back and you can lock it in this uh, three-quarter uh, rear position if you're dealing with a sloped surface that's facing away from you. Like again, a rooftop, a rock, something like that. And if you need to adjust each of these legs independently, you can do that, of course, since each one of these is an independent unit. Coming down from here, this button right here is going to allow you to extend the legs so all you have to do is push this, or actually all you have to do is just lift up the bipod, pull out the leg, and that's going to run through a series of notches here on the back side, and it locks into place with this little uh, button right here. In order to stow, just press, and then the weight of the rifle will come down and uh, attach everything back up again. If you want a midway point, you can pull this out and then twist the, the thumb nut right here, and then you can get a very precise point for getting level on uneven terrain. Now this is a little bit of a, a strange thing, actually in, in testing, uh, when it comes to uh, working with the, the leg extension here, it works pretty well, you know, it's, it's somewhat easy to pull these legs out, but the trick is if you're working with a heavy rifle like the one that we're dealing with today, this, uh, the rifle overall weighs I think 11.3 pounds, it's a, it's a big heavy rifle without a scope on it, but in order to get these legs down into position, uh, you kind of have to use both hands and wrangle things around pretty well. One thing that I, I might like to see on a, a later model, I, I know that uh, it's kind of late on this one, and it does work uh, really well for a lot of things, but one of the things that I've liked about one of the older UTG models, the one that I have on my AR-15, is uh, that it has spring tension that actually pushes this leg down into the ground and it makes it a little bit easier to get to an exact point on the, uh, the bipod and lock it down. I can just lift up the rifle and I don't need a second hand to actually you know, push or pull the leg down into position. One of the elements of this bipod that I've really enjoyed are the feet. The feet feature a kind of squishy rubber, and these do an excellent job of connecting with concrete, with grass down into the dirt. They just seem to catch on everything, which is exactly what I want. I've used some models of bipod before that have some harder rubber, and they just kind of drag over concrete, and they don't really connect. I want to be able to load up this bipod when I'm shooting prone, and this one actually does quite a good job. The leg extension controls can be easily flipped around to face whichever direction you want. Since the spring that's under this button is pretty tense, I went ahead and left it where I can easily access it with my, my thumb so it's actually facing toward the rear. But if you want to be able to more easily access this instead and leave this under a pinky or something, then you can actually just take the leg off, flip it around to the other side, put the other one over here, whichever way you want this to be set up. Take a look at the stance of the rifle and how solid it appears. This appearance is not deceiving. The whole thing feels very stable for a few reasons. The two legs open up at a maximum angle here of 50 degrees, 
and everything is nestled down between these two points right here. It is not sitting up on top of something that's going to rotate, it's sitting down inside this bipod. Now that you've seen the parts and the specs, what is the actual shooting experience like with the UTG Recon Flex? In a word, stable. I've never encountered a tactical or field style bipod that moved as little as this one does and just felt as solid as it does. Since you have this very wide stance and you have the whole rifle kind of cradled down into this instead of sitting up on top of the bipod, it all just locks in really nicely. Once you get the, the butt back into your shoulder just right, you get your rear bag in place, it's like firing a cannon, especially with a, a big gun like this one. It just doesn't want to move around. It resists movement. It stays very, very stable. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing. Depending on what kind of shooting you're gonna be doing, you might want this one best, or you might want to avoid it altogether. If you're gonna be shooting very precisely at long range targets, or very small stuff, this is the bipod for you. It is going to lock down very tightly. Once you start getting into movement, however, especially at closer distances, or you're going to be bouncing from target to target in a dynamic sort of situation, the lack of flexibility on here may be a bit of a hindrance. When you move this gun as you're tracking a target, or if you are quickly going from one target to the next, again, there is no motion. So what you're doing is you're just dragging the legs on the ground from one spot to the next. There's very little movement that you can actually get out of this. So you kind of have to pick a spot or get very small movements and try to hit like that. So at 300 yards in that moving target challenge, this didn't work out all that well. Once we stepped back to 600, it was just fine uh, because there were very small movements to be made. But then as you get closer, as things get uh, a little bit quicker and a little bit more side to side, it didn't work out quite so well. However, like I say, it, I've never encountered anything that sat as solidly as this when it comes to those static shots. Some of the other things that you might think about before you purchase this, since most bipods are going to sit on the underside, they're going to be taking up a lot of space down here that kind of aligns with your magazine, your grip, and your, your buttstock back here. With this, when you actually stow these legs, they stow to the sides of the barrel. So it's not actually going to fit in most cases unless you have a very thick case, like one of the big thick Pelicans, or you have a drag bag, which is what I've been using. Uh, those are really the only cases that can handle the width of this. So one more thing to, to think about there. And what, since you can't actually quick detach these and you really don't wanna take these things off in the field, you're kind of stuck with, you know, once you've attached it, it's kind of a permanent attachment. And if you want to take things off, you're going to have to go back to your truck, someplace where you can be kind of safe. You're not going to lose parts or back to your bench to take this off. Uh, if you decide that you want to put this on a rifle where you need to be able to strip it off really quickly for maybe offhand shooting, then yeah, this probably isn't going to be the one for you. However, keep in mind with that lightweight, you can stow this thing and continue to shoot pretty well depending on the weight of your rifle and it's not going to get as nasty out um, kind of pitching the weight toward the muzzle end as you would see with uh, certain other bipods that have to have all kinds of steel parts uh, or extra adapters and things like that. This is going to keep your weight down quite a bit out at that muzzle end. Overall, consider the actual kind of shooting that you'll be doing with your individual rifle. If it involves dynamic, quick transitions between shots, then this is probably not the bipod for you. If, however, you need to be able to get as steady as possible on any kind of ground, including various pitch surfaces, I think this may be the bipod for you. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.